Okay, so this one's going to be very interesting as far as Pokemon goes, because it kind of seems like, you know, maybe there was more to it than that. So if you go into the Pokemon Tower in Gen 1, you, you know how, like, the Pokemon were ghost types and all that, and occasionally you could run into, like, something like a Hubone or a... That wasn't a ghost type if you didn't have the Silt, the silt Scope. So it's really interesting. I mean, are the Pokemon that you're actually in there fighting, are they technically supposed to be the ghost Pokemon that, you know, like the dead Pokemon? Or was it just maybe a misconception by the actual game designers that, you know, like you could run into ghost Pokemon and you couldn't, that weren't really ghost Pokemon. So like, for example, like, I mean, yeah, you could run into Ghastly, Haunter, but then every now and again, you'll run into a Cubone. And, you know, and actually you could all run into Volpix, not, not in the final release version, but, uh, you know, you apparently could run into Volpix there if you didn't catch it and what's even more strange is even in the prototype data if we dig around some of the maps you apparently didn't need the silt scope in order to uh, catch them in the lavender town uh redesign where um like in the silt dungeon later on or not the silt dungeon the uh, the league dungeon because there was like eight more floors you had to go through and apparently you didn't have to you could catch like all the same pokemon there including nine tails and it was even like level it was like, uh, it wasn't even a ghost type Pokemon in that game. So it's kind of interesting to think how that would have worked. Or you could even catch Marowak too, and I think Guardia, which was the Pokemon Marowak evolved into. Uh, it's it's interesting to think. So is Pokemon, so as, as far as Pokemon goes, is, is it possible that when they did all this, is it possible that all these designs could have actually had been, you know, uh, maybe there was more to it than that like again ghost type pokemon are very interesting because some people believe they're not really ghost types they could actually just be gas but you know but so is but anything else could be unknown energy and you very well could it's by defined by supernatural activity um ghastly can just make things disappear haunter by definition was always like you know if you feel like you're being watched by something then probably haunter is there and then you have gengar typical like you know he's just there stalking you like kind of like haunter but it seems like haunter is actually a lot more worse though even though gengar is a lot more stronger though so but at the same time though you know, I wouldn't be surprised that's how they initially interpret it. Like, Pokemon Tower is supposed to be haunted. You know, I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, it's supposed to be like, you, you could see a lot of dead things. It wasn't just Team Rocket killed stuff up there. You know, it was also like, you know, there were a bunch of Pokemon that were probably already dead and their souls are still haunting that place. Because that's where their resting place is, apparently. So, would it surprise me that you're running into ghost type Pokemon, the, the actual souls, but you can't catch them? No. And at the same time in the games, it was just a placeholder anyways, um, without the silt scope. So, but yeah, it's really interesting to think like, you know, Pokemon like Vulpix, a Cubone, and, you know, could actually appear as ghost type Pokemon too, and they weren't really ghosts either. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to think because if if the Pokemon Tower really is dead there, and I mean, yeah, it's a service memorial, then it kind of makes me wonder, you know, like in real life, what town is Lavender Town really based on in real life? Because like, if you think about it, the first four regions of Japan are actually based on real life locations. I mean, that's how that's how much information that um, goes into this whole thing with uh, Satoshi Tajiri's creations. A lot of people don't really see it, but you know, until you really do the research, you know, they really are based on real life locations in, in Japan. And, um, so it does make me wonder, you know, what town and city are those really based on? And, you know, how much of a realism does it have compared to the games, you know? So I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest that they could have been ghosts, but even in the prototype data, they weren't ghost Pokemon, even though they could learn some ghost moves here and there. But it's interesting to think though, that even like someone like Ninetales, I mean, like if you played like Pokemon Mystery Dungeons, like the very first one, you know that Ninetales, you know, could curse people. We actually saw it, you know, even though it wasn't a ghost Pokemon, but it had supernatural like powers, you know? So it's, it's interesting though, to think that, that's what we're dealing with. So, like, just because they're a ghost Pokemon doesn't mean that they're an actual spirit. But they could do things that are, like, of the supernatural. Like, like psychic abilities. And then you had, like, ghost-type Pokemon, which were, like, a different type of, like, supernatural. Of uh, see the future, do dark things. Or, like, or dark-type Pokemon, which were evil. Even though that wasn't until Gen 2, though. 
And so it really does make you wonder, like, all the locations that we go to could very well have been, like, a, a spawn point that we don't we don't think about. So Lavender Town could have been, like, one of those locations, like, one of those supernatural tied to the, like, you know, the people that live there actually believe there's more than what you can see. But, like, what is that, though? And what does it mean, you know? So it really does make you think, like, ghost-type Pokemon and other sort of Pokemon are, like, they all have their own abilities. And we're just now realizing this as we progress through the series and the whatnot. Because, again, even if you think about, like, all the ghost-type Pokemon that were in Gen 1, they probably had a lot of scrap Gen 1 Pokemon. Because we're still missing, like, that we know of. It's, like, there's 113-something designs anywhere between, like, index numbers uh, 192 to, like, 2899. And so we're still trying to figure out, like, what that all means. But there's even a few Pokemon even before that. And I think one of them's a baby Kangaskhan. But we could be wrong, though. But I still think it is, though, because it just looks like it. So I wouldn't be surprised. So, I don't know. Like, I'm starting to think right now, as far as, like, Pokemon Tower goes, like, there's just so much about it that, you know, like, they buried Pokemon. I always thought it was interesting how they buried the Pokemon, like, on each floor. Like, they dig a little hole, they put the remains in, and then, like, they wouldn't dig, like, through the floor and you'd fall through it. You know, it's actually very interesting how they managed to do that. It's actually pretty cool, actually. So that way, the you know, it was it was structured very well. As a matter of fact, according to some of the prototype data, there was actually supposed to be an elevator you could take to get up to the top floor, too. And it was a little bit different, too, the way it looked and all that. Because it was still unfinished, but it was very interesting how they planned to design it. And it does make you wonder what else they, they were going to put in there. The whole buried alive thing was fake, obviously. But it does make me wonder, though, like, you know... What else was? What else could a Game Freak put in that tower? Could we have saw Team Rocket originally trying to attack the place, or did we just get there a little too late and we weren't able to stop them? It does make me wonder, though. So it's interesting to think about because it does really make reflect on the idea that you know Pokemon really don't die; they faint. But then all of a sudden, Satoshi Tajiri throws something like this in the game, and I mean, I don't know what the Japanese version says a hundred percent, but because I haven't, I don't remember, but if they do mention that Pokemon do die and it's kind of been censored, you know, it'd be very interesting to think about, especially Lavender Town, you know, um, we really would, you, you could really see a huge difference in the series if, like, we could get that kind of symbology of um, what the series is talking about, because again, Japan is very spiritual, they do believe that there's more than one life, and they also believe that there's more out there than they can see. So, like, there are people out there that can probably see things that they, you know, most people can't. But it does make me wonder how that would happen. And here's something else to think about. In Gen 2, if you think about the, the Pokemon radio tower that you went to where the Pokemon tower originally was built, it wasn't always like that. The same Pokemon tower actually still existed in the uh, the prototype. The, uh, f the funny thing was that they did put a radio tower right next to it, but it was actually not the same radio tower um yeah if, if i remember correctly it was still the pokemon tower and it still did have pokemon that were buried there it just wasn't nearly as tall but it was um you know it was still the same pokemon tower though um and it kind of had like a more uh you know it still had like a theme song to go along with it kind of like the the regular pokemon tower so it was really interesting to see how they did that. I actually wouldn't be surprised in the slightest that um, they decided to change it in a way because, you know, they probably thought it was too scary for the original games. But then again, you know, at the same time, though, they probably wanted to do something with it, you know. But it's still kind of weird, though, if you think about it. Like, even in, even in the final version of Gold and Silver, like, we're sitting here thinking, like, you know, every time we go and open the Pokemon Tower up or, like, we go to the Pokemon Tower, they turn it into a radio tower. It's like you decide to build, in, like, one of the most haunted places in Japan, a, a radio tower of all places. <laughs> you know, it's just like, like, okay, where's all the graves at? You know? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I just think it's kind of interesting. But yeah, so yeah, anyways, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Um, if I find any more ideas, I'll talk about them. There's always something to talk about. So hey, if you're, if you're having a wonderful day, please have a wonderful day. And if you want to support me on Patreon, go ahead. You don't have to, though. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we hit 1,000 subscribers, but we're going we're gonna to try to hit 10,000, and then we're going to hit 100,000, and then 1 million, and then we're just going to keep going from there. 
So, see you later, everybody.